types of data do you use in your research project? My research project. So my research projects are mostly along the lines of creating heterogeneous data sets, right? So multiple data sets that allow digital humanists uh, to interact with a question from kind of multiple technical perspectives. So my research really focuses on, you know, how much effort are scholars willing to put into learning a, a schema, to learning a tool, um, to really thinking about what is lost, what is gained, that kind of thing. Um, so my plan is to usually uh, test out a whole bunch of different tools and then see which causes the least number of emails to show up in my inbox asking questions over the course of two months. And then implement that and see if it's compatible with um, the digital publishing or the visualization uh, tools that, that we've selected just based on their kind of um, sustainability and usability. Yeah. And do you see any pattern out of that? I mean, are there I do. tools that people more readily adopt or I would, strategies that are... I would say my, my favorite discovery, and this is purely based on observation um, over the course of six years, is that digital humanists and actually humanities scholars of any, of any kind of sort love imagining what technology could do, and they become very anxious about asking too much. So having someone who can kind of break that down and ask the right questions and empower them to continue imagining and, and kind of speculating is kind of the best way to go out of that. Mm. Um, so that they don't feel responsible for learning the technology, but they feel kind of affiliated with and, and responsible for the technology. Mm. I think that that's really interesting. Well, I could ask myself the, you, the same you could. question. Would you, would you like me to ask it to you, just to make it easier? No, no, no. no. I, I'm happy to ask myself. Uh, what kind of data do we use in our research projects? I mean, uh, so, question is, what type of data do we use in our research projects? And again, uh, we work in a lab where we don't have our own research projects, uh, but we are supporting uh, other scholars and groups and consortia that are coming up with their research. So. What we have to deal with uh, a lot of the time uh, is legacy data uh, and uh, legacy data or data that's presently curated uh, but done in systems that are uh, not completely thought through in terms of uh, reusability, re-expressibility and these sorts of things. So the stuff that we have to deal with is uh, grabbing data sources that exist, analyzing them, understanding what they're about, uh, and then uh, trying to usually break them up into uh, more consistent units of knowledge uh, and cleaning up uh, the data that you find in fields and tables that have been mixed together uh, so that you can do, you can actually work with the data either directly to, you know, run some analysis, do some fasting, run some statistics, uh, create some charts. Uh, or in order to uh, map it to a, a semantic model. So we do a lot of uh, legacy data. Um, what do you mean by legacy data? Hmm, that's a good question. And it's uh, a good question. I'm Barple Walters. Well, as I said, legacy data or, or presently used data uh, that is uh, not very well structured. So it has to do with, you know, either uh, there exists some research that's been done in Excel or FileMake or, or what have you uh, that uh, is valuable as such, but uh, that uh, software strategy or what have you is no longer of value, it's no longer delivering uh, the level of expediency, efficiency, visualization, whatever it is the scholars want to do. The license is no longer valid, it doesn't run on Windows, the present Windows, because it was originally created in Windows 95 or God knows what, uh, so that could be legacy data. On the other hand, it could just be that there are, uh, you know, if you're thinking about like a larger institution then they invest in the software uh, that is going to be with the institution for a long time uh, and it's very good at documenting certain sort of things uh, but then if you want to do new adaptive research you have new questions then you need to document different things that aren't in the system uh, and that information 
it's very difficult within a large organization and with a large piece of software to do the kinds of changes that you want to do adaptive in order to be able to do adaptive research. So you have to push out some information from a live system that only does X uh, so that you can start asking new questions and building data on top of uh, already existing research or documentation. That's what I mean by legacy data. Kind of thing. That's what I mean by legacy data.